that needs a story told. And in the sunsets of Olivia Wiggins, I'm speaking for those people who are trapped inside their own minds with dementia or Alzheimer's and the family members who are bouncing around trying to do something with that. In um, a more contemporary, a more recent book, Three Hens and a Peacock, the idea in that text is finding yourself and recognizing that when you are your truest self, you make your best contributions to the universe. The books I've written for teachers are books that push us to use literature in new ways and to bring children into places where literature becomes a powerful tool for them to see themselves and to see others and to grow the world a little bit. The piece I'm working on um, right now, I have a picture book that will be out in 2018. It's being illustrated at the moment by an artist named Jim LaMarche. And it's about um, a little boy who lives with a beekeeper. The whole focus of that text is to leave you with the notion that if you do not take care of the bees, you will be in a real mess. That this world depends on honeybees. One third of our food source comes from the pollination of honeybees. <coughs> And here's a simple little story about a little boy and a great aunt who are caring for the bees. My most recent project um, in terms of literature is a collection of poetry um, set in the Civil Rights Movement. Um, as a white gay southerner, I understand bigotry both from the inside and the outside. I know what it's like to be the target of hatred. I've also been the witness of people distributing it to others because I was born in 1956, which puts me in a place where my early childhood was in the years with two water fountains and two churches and two schools and two worlds. I have long wanted to write about the civil rights movement but have never felt that I had the right to do so because I sit in a seat of privilege as a white male. And so it is not my story to tell. And I played with um, several books, and among them were the books of Diane Siebert, who wrote books like Mississippi, where the Mississippi River talks to you in a first-person voice, and Thomas Locker's Water Dance, where the water mm -hmm. speaks to you and tells you its cycle. What I chose to do to address that was to select several, about a dozen or more, iconic things from the Civil Rights Movement the Edmund Pettus Bridge, the two water fountains, a rope, an old oak tree, a stick of dynamite, a stained glass window that was the only one left standing in the 16th Street Church. And let each of them speak to you in a first person poem. The poems we printed on top of black and white images taken from archives that are from the era pulled from the Library of Congress. And then on the back side of that will be a collection of things that take you into what I remember. I was nine when this happened. I was 11 when that happened. And what do I notice? And what did my conscious mind think of it? Probably not what you would think. And then that will be paired with um, some historic information. So I'm taking one of the poems. This one's called Rope, just so you get a feel for how that handles. And the idea here is that as a writer, as a person with privilege, it's our obligation to use the voice that we find to make this world a better place for others. I am not weak. I am accustomed to work. I have been used to lift bales of hay into the loft, to, sing, to swing children in old tires and old folks on porches. I have been stretched and strained fill of buckets filled with water from deep wells. I have pulled cars from ditches and dragged sleds across near frozen fields. Yet I have remained strong. But when they tossed me over the limb of an ancient oak and made a noose from my loose end, I snapped. Each piece will speak to you about something in history that requires a little background knowledge. These young men led by their teacher, are using their voices in all the forms of writing, in multiple genres, and in different formats. And if you'll just take a minute and listen, each of them has a short 10-minute presentation so that we can get everybody up here in on the panel 
and listen to the ways that they have learned to use their voices. So we're gonna start with um, Mr. Augustowski, their teacher, who's known as Mr. A, Mr. A on Twitter, so please follow the young man.